anything. If you want to put bricks under your feet so you can touch the floor, they have those bricks there. I think there's a few around. Yeah. Otherwise, you just, you know, it's hard to sit properly with them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Everybody died today, mm -hmm. huh? Only a few people left. <laughs> Nobody's here. <laughs> okay. Ramadava Kunjavi 
हार कृष्ण हार कृष्ण कृष्ण हरि 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 हम हरे हम 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 हरि हरे हरे हरि हरि हम हार कृष्ण हार कृष्ण कृष्ण हरि 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 राम हरे हम 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 हरि हरे हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरि हम हम हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 हम हरे हम 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 हरे हरे हम कृष्ण कृष्ण हम Hai Gaur, Hai Gaur, Hari Ho, Hari Ho, Hari Ho, Hari Ho, Hari Ho, Hari Ho. जाय जाय प्रभु पान प्रभु पान प्रभु पान जाय प्रभु पान और पेमरंदे हरि हरि कीर प्रभु पान की ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सो वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम कैंटो 10 चैप्टर 4 The Atrocities of King Kamsa, text number 42. Okay. Sahi Sarva Surat Yaksa Hum Yasura Dvi Guha Sayaha Tamula Devata Sarva Sheswara चैश्वरा चतुर्मुख आयम वाथर्वाद्योपय यादृशीण विहिंसन साहि सर्वसुराध्याक्सो यासुराद्विदुहासय तमुरादेवता सर्वाईरा सा चतुर्मुख आयम वाथर्वाद्यापय यादृशीण विहिंसन साहि सर्वसुराध्याक्सो यासुराद्विदुहासय तन्मुला देवता सर्वा 
Vaishyaishwara sa chatur mukha. I am Vatad Vado Payo Yad Vishinam Vihim Sanam Ladies, Anyone else want to try? So, he, Lord Vishnu, he, indeed, Sarva Sura Adyaksa, the leader of all the demigods, <coughs> he, indeed, Asura Dwit, the enemy of the Asuras, Guhasyaya. He is the super soul within the core of everyone's heart. Tamulaha. Taking shelter at his lotus feet. Devata. The demigods exist. Sarva. All of them. Saishwaraha including Lord Shiva, Satur, Satchatur Mukha, as well as Lord Brahma, 
who has four faces. Ayam. This is. Vai. Indeed. Tatvada upaya. The only means of killing him. Vishnu. Yat. Which. Rishinam. Of the great sages. Sir, saintly persons or Vaishnavas. Vihimsanam, suppression with all kinds of persecution. Translation. So the d demons are speaking again. Lord Vishnu, the super soul within the core of everyone's heart, is the ultimate enemy of the Asuras and is therefore known as Asura Dwit. He is the leader of all the demigods because all the demigods, including Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma, exist under his protection. The great saintly persons, sages and Vaishnavas also depend on him. To persecute the Vaishnav, therefore, is the only way to kill Vishnu. Hmm. Pretty ruthless statement. Purport, the demigods and the Vaishnavas especially are part and parcel of the Supreme Lord Vishnu because they are always obedient to the law, to his orders. Om tad Vishnu paramam padam sadat prasyanti surayaha. The demoniac followers of Kamsa thought that if the Vaishnavas, saintly persons and sages were persecuted, the original body of Vishnu would naturally be destroyed. Thus, they decided to suppress Vaishnavism. The Asuras perpetually struggle to persecute the Vaishnavas because they do not want Vaishnavism to spread. Vaishnavas preach only devotional service, not encouraging karmis, jnanis, and yogis, because if one must liberate oneself from material condition of life, one must ultimately become a Vaishnava. Our Krishna conscious movement is directed with this understanding and therefore, the Asuris always try to suppress it. Um agyan timiranda sya gina jena salakaya chaksu unmilitam yena tasmai shri gurvena maha shri chaitanya manobi stam stapitam yena bhutale swayam rupa kadam mayam dadanti swa padanti kam Shri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasudhi Gorda Bhakta Vrindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. Hmm. So, to pre-Krishna consciousness means to fight against the Asuras, who are always trying to stop the spread of real religious principles. You see, what goes on in the world today, generally, is the type of worship of the Lord that is mixed with uh, material desires. We call it karma yoga, or jnana yoga, stanga yoga, different kinds of yogas. People generally want um, spiritual life or religious life and they want a better material situation. So people worship God for material things. Mm -hmm. But real Vaishnava religion is to purify the heart of all material desires and awaken one's love of God, Prema Pumartha Mahan. So Vaishnavism, or the pure religion of the soul, is is transcendental to everything in this material world. And therefore, people don't really want it. They want mix, and that's the general tendency, to mix it in a little bit of material happiness, a little bit of spiritual happiness, mix it in nicely. That's the tendency in the world today. Very rarely, people want to get out of the material world because um, they have one because they have very little understanding what is spiritual life and what is the material world and how one can actually uh, achieve perfection in life 
through transcendental religion or transcendental activity. And therefore, when we present this, it becomes very hard for people either to understand it and very hard for them to accept. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has kind of tricked everybody. He says, don't worry about all these things, just chant Hare Krishna. And then that way you'll, you'll get it eventually. <laughs> Take some prasadam, chant Hare Krishna, read some books, be a nice person, and after some time your material life is gone. <laughs> Where did it go? Oh my God, what happened? <laughs> so, yeah, he, he's coming from a different perspective. Krishna says, give it all up. Lord Chaitanya says, just chant. <laughs> and it's the same process, but Krishna makes it a little more difficult for the people in Kali Yuga. And Lord Chaitanya is Kali Yuga Pavana, Kali Boyanasana, Sri Sachi Nandana Namre. So he is the compassionate and merciful manifestation of God in this age. Knowing the quality of the age, manda sumanda mateo, manya bhaga padataha. People are just not spiritually inclined at all. And even if they are, they're not qualified. <laughs> so we have to create inclinations and create qualifications, and that comes by chanting Hare Krishna and engaging in some practical, simple activities to serve the Lord in different ways. Mm -hmm. But even that becomes hard for people to accept. And Prabhupada was giving a lecture one time. He said, it, Lord Chaitanya is saying, oh, just chant 16 rounds, and you can't even do that. <laughs> so he would <laughs> kind of like let us know that even the chant 16 round, it's so hard in this age <laughs> to chant 16 rounds. And so Prabhupada made it easy when he first started. He said 64 rounds a day. Because Bhakti Siddhanta's program was those who were staying at the Mott, not preaching, had a chant 64 rounds. And those who were going out to preach, they, they, were, they could chant less because they were doing preaching work. But those who stayed back, and stayed in the moth, then they were required to chant 64 rounds so they wouldn't sleep all day. <laughs> you got to keep busy. That's one of the pitfalls of staying in the temple. You have to somehow or other use your time in the best possible way, and there's so many op opportunities to do other things. <laughs> you know, if you have a little extra time, you, you might turn on, you know, YouTube or... <laughs> check what's out and see what's going on in Amazon, what they're selling. <laughs> so, you know, this is, this is the idle mind. So in order to keep that mind engaged, of course, if one is engaged in practical service throughout the day, that's nice. Well, Bhakti Siddhanta understood that, you know, 64 rounds. And Prabhupada tried it with us, but it didn't work. You know, Americans, they fight against everything. <laughs> He said, no way, Swamiji, we're not going to do it. <laughs> Give us another one. He said, they didn't say it like that, but I mean, that's the purport. <laughs> but, you know, then Prabhupada said 32 rounds, and even that caused people to c have convulsions. So, <laughs> so he said 16 and no less, and that was it. <laughs> so, yeah. It's very hard for people to take up real religious principles in this age. It's hard. And then when there's some success and some spreading, the demons become upset, and then they try to suppress it in different ways, and then there's apparently more and more difficulty. But, the, but as long as we are preaching Krishna consciousness, we are in the best position. Here, it says that devoted Vaishnavas only preach devotional service not encouraging karma yoga or those who want jnana yoga or just yoga itself, people who practice various types of yogas in order to achieve some kind of mystic cities or some powers like that. So, um, and so to preach Krishna consciousness is a fight. Even Lord Chaitanya, when he was here, 
He had to fight against Prakasananda Saraswati. He fought against the Buddhists. He fought against, uh, what was the other group? He had to defeat Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. The Lord preached. But well, most of the time he preached in, with his purity of, of presence. Just by his presence, people were charmed and became inclined to listen to what he said. But when it came to the Buddhists, he couldn't, tra he couldn't, he couldn't uh, change their minds. He defeated them. And you can read the whole section in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. How he took each of the Buddhist principles and showed the actual, under, the proper understanding. But when the Buddhists were defeated, they didn't accept defeat. So they tried to cause harm to Lord Chaitanya. And so um, the uh, Buddhists came with a big plate of food. And they said, this is for you. We want to offer this food to you. But it was contaminated. It was actually bad, con contaminated. And so they offered it to Lord Chaitanya. And when it was offered to him, one gigantic bird came flying. And the plate was heavy. It was like a really heavy iron plate. And so the bird picked up the plate with its beak, big bird, and flew and then all the foodstuffs were going everywhere. And then he flew over the head of the Buddhist leader and dropped the plate. <laughs> and it hit the Buddhist leader on the head and knocked him out unconscious. <laughs> and so, uh, what to do? And so all the Buddhist followers, all his chelas, his followers became upset. What happened? Our leader's been killed. <laughs> so they ran around him and he was unconscious. So Lord Chaitanya just instructed him, just chant Hare Krishna. So they start chanting Hare Krishna and he came back to consciousness. <laughs> so that's how he defeated the Buddhists. That was, they, he actually did, he defeated them by taking apart their principles one by one, the nine principles of Buddhism. You can read the principles are listed and you can read the refutation statements by Lord Chaitanya. So. So we, we, Prabhupada wanted us to go out and challenge the uh, materialists in different ways and uh, engage in various types of debates. We don't do that so much. In some places that's going on very occasionally, not, not so much. Because generally people don't accept defeat. There was that famous Islamic leader. I don't know who he is. He's really super intelligent. He's a leader of many Islamic followers. And he's noted for defeating everybody in his public... You remember his name? It starts with a Z or something. Very famous. Anyway, uh, Bhakti Vakash Maharaj challenged him to a debate, but he said, I don't debate anybody who has less than 10,000 10, followers. So he got out of that. But then Bhakti Purushottam Maharaj, who's here, he's in Chicago today, arranged and there was a bait, debate scheduled. But it was in India and they were about to discuss. And they started to discuss and when it, it started a tremendous rainstorm came and everybody had to leave <laughs> because it was outside, the, the whole venue was outside. So there was a few little discussions and dialogue. And then um, later on, I saw an interview with him where he's, his followers were asking him about the Hare Krishna movement. What are they? And he remembered his little encounter with Bhakti Purushottam Maharaj. You can ask Maharaj about that. He's here. And uh, he made the statement that they follow the Bhagavad Gita. And the Bhagavad Gita is Smriti. And therefore, they don't follow the Shrutis, with the, which are the actual Vedas. <laughs> so that was his statement. Because he, 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 he was born in India, and he grew up in India. So he, he, has, he has knowledge of a lot of scripture. 
But Bhakti Purushottam Maharaj said that actually Krishna has taken the Vedas as a cowherd boy milks a cow and has taken the essence of the Vedas and that is what Krishna presented in Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, it's called Gita Upanishad. <laughs> it's one of the Upanishads there, which is part of the Vedas, like that. So, um, yeah, so that was his criticism that we're, we're basing our practice on Shmriti, not on Shruti. <laughs> but Shruti is commentary on the Vedas. No one can understand the Vedas. It's not possible, you know. It's very difficult. I mean, it's, I mean, you have to be, you have to know Sanskrit, you know, have to be Brahminically qualified just to begin to uh, begin to understand Vedic and it takes great amount of study and time to break through these the, the language of the Vedas and so so all our you know so we follow Shmiti most of our scriptures are Shmiti but we also engage in Upanishads the Upanishads are Shruti so we have Sri Yish Upanishad which is Shruti and which is the most uh, personal of all the Upanishads. Some of them are very impersonal, some of them impersonal. Sri Ish, Isho, it's called Isho. Isho is another name for the Supreme Lord. And Sri Isho Upanishads. So if any of you, if you're not busy tonight, we have a outside program where we're supposed to speak on the Upanishads. So, <laughs> just in case, I just thought I mentioned that. So, yeah, and so preaching is not easy in this age, but Prabhupada says, if you want to be recognized by Krishna, preach. Mm -hmm. And he said, even if you're not successful, if you take up the preaching, Krishna will recognize you. Even if you have very little or no results, if you make an attempt to preach, you get recognized by Krishna. Because he says in the Bhagavad Gita, in the very end of the discourse, in the last chapter, he says, there's no one more dear, nor will there ever be more one dear than one who speaks this message to the devotees. So, therefore, to become dear to Krishna, that's our goal, try to become dear to Krishna, is to take up this mood of preaching in some form or another, <coughs> like that. So, that's becomes... And we see this is the history of our movement, but there will always be resistance. But the fighting spirit is part of the nature of the condi conditioned soul. We like to fight. Where do we get that propensity to fight? Because it's in Krishna. <laughs> to fight is natural. <laughs> Not to fight is you're dead. <laughs> but how to direct that fighting spirit in a beneficial way, means to fight against those who are against God in the form of presenting the knowledge of Krishna in a very convincing way. So we preach to ourselves. We preach to the choir, as they say. And that's important because why do we preach to the devotees? So they become inspired to preach also, to take up Krishna consciousness and preach. But there's a lot of people outside who need to hear it, so we have to go out there also and try to preach Krishna consciousness in some way or another. And there's there's so many medias available today to present Krishna consciousness. Like um, now, you know, people watch so many, I don't know all the different types of medias that are out there, but people watch videos a lot. It's a big thing now. So preaching through video. So His Holiness Shiva Ram Maharaj has taken up this uh, task and he's doing these videos every, I think once a week. And they're no more than, oh, at most 10 minutes long, at most. And he takes issues that people are dealing with or he takes things that need to be explained and he presents it in a very interesting way. I've been seeing some of them. And um, getting a lot of feedback from the outside world because, you know, he's presenting it as it is. And so he's got a large media audience and tens and thousands of people are, are plugging into what he's doing. 
So that's one way, just to mention, you know, to get out there and somehow use the media to present Krishna consciousness in different ways. You know, re-resurrecting re re the Harinam Sankirtan movement, going out on the streets and doing Harinam. That's always effective because it purifies the atmosphere and people become attracted. Some do, some don't, but that's just natural like that. So that's a very powerful way to preach and of course book distribution, which is, uh, so these are different mainstream ways to preach, but there are so many other ways to preach using the temple facilities to invite people to come in for various types of seminars. So we need to preach more and more and more. And Prabhupada says, more preaching, better preaching. <laughs> like that. So especially those of you who are born in India, you have that acumen, you have that uh, genealogical shakti, you might say. <laughs> so the Prabhupada said, uh, he quotes, and then out of, out of all the verses that Prabhupada ever quotes, this verse was quoted most. Bharate bhumite hoila janma sar kari. Help me with that one. Para Upakan. Those who are born in the land of Bhardvarsya, India, it's their duty to do good to the world. They, in other words, they should take up this movement and then spread Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada said, at least one person is doing it. <laughs> he was talking about himself. So there's those who have that, uh, well, every, it's for everyone, but especially, and if every devotee in the movement starts to preach, Lord Chaitanya's movement will happen fast. <laughs> It'll happen fast because we have something and people are looking they're struggling. Now people are mixed up. They don't know what is real spirituality. They don't. They can't see the difference between organized religion and spirituality. People don't want organized religion, but they want to do like meditation. They want to do chanting. They want to do various types of yoga postures. They have distanced themselves from mainstream religion and they want to more or less present, uh, they want to practice some kind of spirituality that are the principles of spirituality without being connected to an organizational arrangement. So that is an opportunity for us to go into different areas with people who are like that. Just like I was just giving a, one of my disciples arranged a program for me in MIT coming up and when I go to Boston in about three weeks. And in that, uh, she was saying, you can't speak philosophy here, but they love kirtan. <laughs> MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It's an ongoing program, and they distribute prasadam and have kirtan. And the kids love it, you know, the students love it. I've done two, two programs in, MI, in MIT over the years. Uh, Prabhupada also went to MIT. So, yeah, so you see a lot of universities and colleges, they also have these other activities going on, yoga, different kinds of meditation groups, and people are interested in, in some kind of aspect of spirituality, but not, they're not interested in the organizational part. <laughs> Because they think too many rules and regulations, restrictions, it just gets bogged down. <laughs> you can't figure out, you know, it's all about not doing this. That's what they, that's what they think, organized religion. Or they say, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. I want something else besides being told what not to do all the time. <laughs> So, yeah, so this is the mentality. I'm not saying it's good. This is just the nature of the mentality in people in Kali Yuga. They have an interest. The interest is, bring, is strong and it's growing. Yesterday we heard about vegetarianism. That's one of the ways to enter into the lives of people with something spiritual, but coming in from that perspective like that, having vegetarian restaurants and 
various prasadam programs for distribution. Krishna Lunch, great program. It's really a good program. Like that. Many temples have Krishna Lounge. It's a kind of a, like one night a week. People come and they hear a lecture, not in the temple, in a different place within the, the temple. And we just talk about issues, you know, different important topics that are going on in the world and we present it in a, in a Krishna conscious way. And it stimulates, that's a big program that's been spreading for the last 10 years now, Krishna Lounge, like that. Well, there's so many ways to get involved with preaching. And so, um, this is our life. And if we're preaching, you get a higher taste. This is where the higher taste comes from. I mean, the higher taste comes from kirtan, too. <laughs> the higher taste comes from a lot of things, but it's instant in when you get it from preaching because uh, Lord, Lord Chaitanya has come to spread Krishna consciousness, and anyone who helps him, assists him in that, and they get immediate mercy from Lord Chaitanya. So we want, we want to be, we want to be recognized by the Lord. We want to be favored by the Lord. We want to assist the Lord in helping to spread Krishna consciousness. There's so many different programs. I did a class not re recently, and we were one of the points in the class was try to think of different ways you can spread Krishna consciousness. We came up with over 30 different types of ways to spread Krishna consciousness, using various types of uh, avenues for outreach, for preaching, for entering into various types of uh, dialogues like that. So there's many, many ways that we can get involved. We can join whatever is going on or we can create something ourselves like that. And so, and there's a whole book that was put out uh, called Preaching is the Essence. It's an old book. It goes back to the 1980s. Yeah. And then the devotees went through all of Prabhupada's statements on preaching and compiled a book based on them, them, which is about this big. And it's mostly verses and statements by Srila Prabhupada about preaching in different ways like that. So. All right, and so, and, but you'll, you'll, you'll meet resistance, but this is good. Resistance is good. It actually brings out your good qualities. A, a sincere devotee, when they get resistance, they, they make advancement. An insincere devotee, when he gets resistance, they back off. <laughs> they look for an easy way out. So we want to be sincere, and when we get some resistance, it's good because it helps us to become stronger in our own practice because we have to take shelter of Krishna. We have to take shelter of transcendental knowledge. We have to do something to strengthen ourselves when resistance comes, when obstacles come like that. And so it's good. Obstacles in the material world are setbacks for the materialists because they base their life on a certain way of doing things and when it doesn't happen <coughs> and they meet obstacles, and they find themselves in a difficult position or they give up or they try something different. But for devotees, obstacles are opportunities for, for spiritual growth. So that's why if you want to really get into the world of obstacles, preach. <laughs> You'll get obstacles. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there's much we can say on this particular subject, but we'll stop here. Yes. <clears throat> Maharaj, it says in the verse, uh, the ministers are saying, to persecute the Vaishnavas, therefore, is the only way to kill Vishnu. Mm -hmm. And in his purport, Prabhupada echoes that. He says, the demoniac followers of Kamsa thought that if the Vaishnavas, saintly persons and sages, were persecuted, 
the original body of Vishnu would naturally be destroyed. I'm really having a hard time seeing how that follows. I mean, is that because they're just so foolish? In other words, the only thing that I can think of is, is that they know that the Vaishnavas are so dear to Vishnu that somehow it would break his heart or break his spirit or his will. And what, what does that mean? I think it's a wrong conclusion. That's their, that's their what we say, huh? assumption. And I think based on what you said, that the Vaishnavas are so dear to Vishnu that they, they don't see Vishnu as, you know, they see Vishnu as being vulnerable. So, but I don't think Prabhupada uh, goes along with that. He says that's what they say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why they even think like that? Because don't I guess they don't know that Vishnu is yeah. immortal, eternal, the supreme. Yeah. Harani Kashipu said the same thing. Hmm. <clears throat> he said, you know, he said, um, <clears throat> Vishnu is my enemy, and I'm going to kill him. But he's hiding in the hearts of his devotees now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he he saw Vishnu as somebody who was able to, to be destroyed. Yeah. And because he saw him in his pride, and it's the same thing, one of the characteristics of a, a demon is arrogance, yeah. based on his pride, having some power. So that arrogance, that pride, creates this arrogance, which is based on, which is based on ignorance. Yeah. They're just, they're wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's just the way they think. That's uh... Because their premise is wrong. I mean, it, if, if, if it were true that Vishnu was mortal or something, then, yeah, it would, it, you get to him by killing somebody who's dear to him, and that would break him. But he's not. He's, yeah, he's... The only element of truth in there is that it would cause Vishnu to become very unhappy or even... Even in the other way, he would act more to protect his devotees. He would what? He would try to protect his devotees then. Yeah. More. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that's just, that's the way they think. Anyone else? Yes, um, <coughs> Subal Prabhu. Mm -hmm. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Uh, <clears throat> I was just thinking, and well, I'd like, would like to ask your, your thoughts. Um, you're mentioning how um, the interest of, of people nowadays is, is um, they're not interested in the, in the regulations and, and, and the organized, the structural part of spirituality, but they want it more or less to practice it, but without much regulation. That's the trend. That's the... Yeah, and of course we have, you mentioned Lord Chaitanya makes it very easy. Just chant, just chant. And uh, as devotees, we find people are very inclined to engage in Kirtan. They actually easily engage in Kirtan and engage in taking prasadam. Um, However, nowadays is, is the, the, the discussion is how ready they are to come to the temples. Or when they come to the temples and they see that there are actually regulations that we follow in the temple. And there is structure and there is worship and there's all these things that happen that may, you know, discourage them. It's not Western friendly. Mm -hmm. um, Look how Prabhupada started. He didn't present any rules or regulations. That's how he, he knew and that would just create this block. He just let people come and be themselves. And he just gave them prasadam, gave them the holy name, and gave them his association, which was very powerful. And gradually, they learned. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> just like it wasn't until somebody did something harmful I forgot the actual incident maybe 
Suresh Babu can remember, Suresh Babu, is that he introduced the, the Shringa prayers. There was some incident that caused Lord you know, Prabhupada to introduce the Shringa prayers. Oh, yeah. Oh, was that was based on his heart attack. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Prabhupada gave things in increments, very slowly. Yeah, although I remember my generation when I, you know, came, uh, just devotees coming to the temple, I mean, the movement was already thriving, although it was during the sort of bubble time of the Sonal Acharya thing when I came. And, but it was a very exciting thing, you know, very big temple base, you know, preaching. Yeah. And, um, and it was very attractive to me, although I was not necessarily searching for spirituality, but the, 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 the cultural thing was the very... The times changed. I remember when I joined, I wanted to hear more and more rules and regulations. I was attracted to deity worship, and then I was just learning all the things you should do and all the things you not, should not do, and I wanted to learn more <laughs> of the do's and don'ts. But that was our generation. <laughs> now it's not like that. <laughs> Maybe there's a few like that around, but <laughs> now it's, you know, make it easy. It's just, you know, people are just not inclined to that but if you give them the pure spiritual activity they're attracted <laughs> so it's no doubt that we have to adjust a lot mm, of our no you bring them in different ways <clears throat> it's not about i mean we we have to keep a certain standard so we're but it's not about preaching rules and regulations, it's about preaching the activities of Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> so people have an, this mindset or they have this attitude that when I come into a, a particular religion, it's all about, you know, structure. <clears throat> and a lot of times they've had that experience. They don't get much of the essence, they get a lot of the structure. <laughs> and they become discouraged. And that's a lot, has a lot to do with, you know, just like if you see there's, you know, if you don't follow the way we teach you, you know, you're condemned. That's, that's being preached, you know. Uh, check out that video. Go online. It's Shiva Ram Maharaj made a presentation: the difference between religion and spirituality. Nice. It's really powerful. You've seen it. But that particular one, you saw that one. I think, how many hits does that got? I mean, hundreds of thousands of hits. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he did another one, what is yoga, what is real yoga? And he showed what is not real yoga, different kinds of yoga. That's, it's a little humorous, yeah. Yeah, they have all kinds of yoga. What is it called, naked yoga? Beer yoga? You ever heard of beer beer yoga? People drink beer and do yoga. <laughs> they call it it's, it's 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 a fad now. People are beer yoga, yeah, naked yoga. What is the other one? Um, I forgot the other yogas. There's about five or six of them that go on in the world today. But then he presented what is real yoga. <laughs> you know. So it's interesting. And the way it's presented, it's done by one devotee. His name is Radha Damodar. He's his disciple. And he's expert with media. He works for Apple. 
So, you know, you get these devotees who know how to use technology. Hey, if you're good at technology, you can, you can really preach nowadays. So, yeah, like that. So, it's not like we have to change anything. We just have to get out there more. If we stay in the temples, we're not going to do much as far as preaching. You got to go out, <laughs> get out there with different programs, meet the people where they are. Yes. I like uh, in the Krishna Samhita by Bhaktivinoda Thakur in the conclusion, he says, the clarity of the subject matter depends on the person, not on the subject itself. So the subject that we're talking about is the truth, so it's already there. So, and then he talks about people with prejudices. He says everybody's kind of born with this prejudice, but until that kind of gets cleared up, they come to a pure state. And I also like Prabhupada said, they want the kingdom of God without God. And yeah, but the problem is that an organized religion has failed. They failed the people. <clears throat> They're more interested in keeping their institution than teaching really about, you know, what is real devotion. And it becomes about, it's more about good works and joining the club. <laughs> Modern day societies, they're either repressive or they're just too loose. That's why they don't have any challenges. But when you preach transcendence, you'll get resistance. Mm -hmm. they're, they're a shadow of their former self, the, you know, the yeah, true religion that was down. presented. They water it down in order to comply with the social and political, or, you know, mood of, to fit in. We're also doing a little bit of that, but in a, in a proper way where we don't compromise our philosophy, but we can, because there was a nice presentation by Conteya, who was a member of the GBC, uh, not a deputy, but he works with the GB. See that religions fail because they don't relate to the people. If we don't relate to people over the time, we will just, you have to get out there and you have to learn about what what's about them and how to present the teachings in, in different ways according to time, place, and circumstance. If you just say, this is the way it is, and if you don't like it, you know, lump it. <laughs> you know, we have that mood in somewhere. I mean, we have to have the standard, the strictness that has to be there. But for outreach we adjust accordingly otherwise we'll be a nice group and then they'll write about us in history oh they came and they went <laughs> they came and they went <laughs> us <laughs> if we just you know stay within our society and say you know this is the way it is you can't do anything else you know we have to present the philosophy. We're, we're a spiritual group, we're not a religious group. Religion is something, is follow rules and regulations. But spirituality means to awaken people's relationship with the Supreme through various activities, especially chanting, particularly chanting. Well, Prabhupada said that religion means following the laws of God. Right. So, and then We do that. Yeah. But then uh, spirituality is the process in which you, you know, go through, right, to come to that final stage. Yeah, but uh, it depends on how you want to present it. That's all. <clears throat> People, they're, they're just not so analytical and they can't think things through, you know. They, like, I mean, myself, I, I would like to... Uh, from, you know, that's why I like the Bhagavad Gita so much because it was just so nicely presented and it's analytical. But people, they don't have that time or they don't have that in inquiry. 
Yeah, that's true. That's why in the last days of Srila Prabhupada, in 1977 lectures, you hear Prabhupada saying a few times, in this age, people cannot understand philosophy. Just give them the holy name and prasadam. He said, just spread this everywhere. He said, this is the way to preach in this age. Very few will be interested in philosophy or come by way of philosophy. But still, we don't minimize that or we don't stop it. But we have to emphasize these other two things, chanting and prasadam distribution. Like that. Chana Kapadnit says, uh, even a fool and a rascal can become purified by good association. Yeah. But then we say, even by good instructions, by good example, some people, they just don't turn, turn around. So That's, what can you do? There's four kinds that come and four kinds yeah. that do not. Well, you know, this is, you, we, you're delivering something valuable and how many people will actually take it? So. Prabhupada uses the Tiffany Tiffany store on Fifth Avenue, right? Yeah. Not too many people will go. To yeah, but we we want to keep trying. <laughs> it's not we're going to give up. <laughs> um, when uh, at the advent of um, uh, the Hare Krishna movement, people was eager to have some sort of religion and spirituality. And that was his, the times. Yeah, and, and uh, the success is because he broke with the paradigms what religion was. That was a monolithic uh, structure. But with the times that have changed youth and, and uh, the historical moments, we have become in a certain way monolithic as well because the structures are so it's not that we have to negotiate the norms the rules is is how we present it uh, to to the yeah. youth and the times and circumstances is yeah. to cater in a way yeah. to because the people is still eager to to find some purpose in their life some spirituality Pre some preaching, balance preaching means time and circumstance yeah, preaching means you preach according to the audience. That's all. <laughs> yeah, Radha Swami goes to big corporations, and he presents principles that are the foundations of spirituality, which people can become interested in and adopt, <laughs> using analogies, stories, personal experiences, and and certain shastric statements. He mixes it up, but he he doesn't talk about you know you know no illicit sex, no intoxication, no meat eating, no gambling. You know you know you don't go to an audience that you know like then you start talking about the four regular principles. <laughs> you know you you just lost three quarters of the audience. <laughs> so. In, when someone was telling me in Greece, in Greece, they don't preach that because um, they tried it, and as soon as they preach that in Greece, oh, practically the whole audience leaves. <laughs> they don't want to hear that one. <laughs> yeah, one girl, she was preaching in Greece for years. She was telling me, we have to be careful. As soon as we hit the four regulative principles, it becomes a problem. <laughs> so we present, all right, chant Hare Krishna, I take nice Krishna prasadam, read some books, associate with nice, some nice people. Yeah, here's the, and then, and, and, you know, we can also talk about certain things. But it's not by, you know, just presenting the don'ts, you know. Let them, they'll learn the don'ts on their own. <laughs> That'll come automatically. <laughs> It's like in yoga, we do a lot of yoga programs, and one of the things is we bring Prabhupada's books. But we just make the table, we put it there with the books, and we just present kirtan 
and different kinds of, you know, presentations based on yoga and kirtan like that. And we don't speak about the books at all. And we just leave them there. And then people sometimes, they walk around and they see the books and they look at them. And they get a little interested like that. We don't even have anybody minding the table. We just put the table there. <laughs> so we want it, people nowadays want an experience. Mm, this, that was, a, that was a, a survey taking. How, how, what are people looking for when they look for religion? They want an experience. We can give them that experience with it. But prasadam, I mean, when they have prasadam, they get an experience. Right? Prabhupada said, make it so good they can't leave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kirtan, that's an experience. Speaking how to better your life in such a way that you become a better person. Speak about certain good qualities. People want to hear that also. How can I be a better person? That's interesting also. Anyway, these are just some ideas. Anything else before we conclude? Okay. Thank you. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.